All right, y'all. Jumping on here for a little bit. We're going to talk about a few fights we got coming up tomorrow. All right, hold on here. So, yeah, just a heads up. Card starts early tomorrow. For me, Eastern time, the card starts at 12 noon. So, you know, that's early for really early for some people. Um, preliminary card starts at 12 noon. And then we got, you know, the main card starting at 3 p.m. So, yeah. Just so y'all know. Because this is an overseas card, right? So, yeah. And we got a co-main event of Molly McCann and Julia Stoyarenko. Definitely not the best card I know, but it should be entertaining somewhat for an afternoon card for us, you know. All right, what's going on, y'all? So let's talk about a few fights here because it's a little later and I just wanted to, you know, I just kind of want to get my picks on this one. And, well, you know, I'm not even really, like, crazy about the picks in this fight, on this fight, on this fight card. I just want to talk about... um the fighters really, you know, and how, how well I think one or the other will do in this, on this card and really what they need to do. Yo, Marcus Ravioli and uh, MMA fan for life. Yeah, it's not a bad, I mean, for afternoon card, cause I'm pretty much going to catch the replay because I'm, I'm working late. So I'm going to be, I might be taking a nap at this time. <laughs> I'm not going to stay up for the fights. I'm not staying up for the fights, and I'm not doing a fight companion. I'm, I got a backward schedule right now. So, yeah, I'll, I'll probably be, like, crashed out at noon, you know, taking a nap. And I'll come back on later and watch the, watch the cards. So if y'all shoot me, like, a spoiler or anything, I probably won't catch. I probably won't pay attention to your spoiler because I'm going to go back and watch the fight card. So, yeah, I'm going to watch it on a, you know, ESPN replay. Well, yeah, we got what three fights? We got three WMMA fights in the, on this card. Got a strawweight fight, bantamweight fight, and a flyweight fight. And yeah, all three of them are really like high level fights. They kind of make or break fights, and we just got to see where, where, where the next move is for the strawweights, really, because you know I'm I'm kind of curious as to where where they all fit in right now really but let's start with yeah let's start with well let's start with the prelims first let's start with this this new young lady they just signed shauna bannon who's already getting like a big buzz behind her you know let's let's go ahead and talk about her versus bruna brazil uh bruna brazil she was winner of contender series uh last year and I was kind of thinking highly of her. You know, I was like, oh, yo, we might have to check out this girl right here. And uh, Denise Gomes shut that dream down real quick, boy. She knocked her out so easy. I mean, <laughs> Denise Gomes is, a, if anything, Denise Gomes needs to be in my triple threat if there's a strawweight triple threat ever. Like, because she done crushed two of my potentials. Well, Bruno Brazil wasn't really like a great potential. I mean, just I'm just saying, like, I thought she had some goods. You know, I thought she had a few goods that could have got her far. You know, she was tall, she was big, you know, she had some pretty good striking. But Denise Gomes shut that down. And the same with Yasmin Harigi, man. She knocked both, she knocked both of them girls out. So yeah, uh Denise Gomes is probably gonna have to be my threat to the strawweight division now, right? Yeah, so um yeah, I I um like I said, this this card here is probably good that it's coming on at this time because that way I won't feel like I'm really missing anything. You know, no knock to the fighters. Cause I like I said, I'm gonna watch it, but you know, my big cards I like to watch at night. I like to get those in and chill and watch. But you know, when they're early like this, I'm hoping that it's a more it's more of a card that I can say, okay, it's not that. It's not that loaded. There's not there's not fights I feel like I have to watch like on time on a time sensitive table. You know, I can go ahead and say, um, I'll I'll catch the replay, you know? And that's how this one is. So let me see. Shauna Bannon, 
versus Bruno Brazil. Sean O'Bannon is 5-0. and oh. uh, For some of y'all that don't know, she's fighting out of Invicta. You know, we've seen her fight a few times. And, um, you know, Bruno Brazil, her name says it all. She's from Brazil. She's 8-3 and three right now and one draw. And like I said, you know, coming into the UFC, I saw some attributes from her. You know, she had some good skills, um, tall, long. Just didn't seem like she really knew how to use that that reach and didn't really know how to um, get off the best power shots against a dog in um, Denise Gomes. But um, looking at Shauna Bannon, like I said, she's fighting out of Ireland. She's already getting a lot of um, hype behind her. You know, she's you know, she's cool with Connor. She's cool with Molly McCann. You know, she's on a car with Molly McCann. Uh, you know, she kind of has this look that everybody as you know, she's kind of pushing herself as, you know, as this new symbol, kind of like Paige, uh, you know, the hair color, everything like that. You know, she, she, you know, she's, she's got that look. She's got that look, right, that she's trying to push and get more promotional. Like she's always, you know, she's always posting them type of pictures on her social media. So she's trying to build herself that fan base. And uh, what better way to do that whenever you're on a Molly McCann card, right, because Molly McCann, People talk about the level she's on, but hey, she's got a big fan base. You know, she's got a bigger fan base than some of your favorite fighters. So, Shauna Band is kind of taking that same step. Uh, but I think with her, she has the potential to be a little bit more. You know, she's five and zero. She's twenty nine years old. You know, she's, she's got somewhat of a ground game to her. You know, that's kind of her biggest thing is her is her scrappiness on the ground and you know her wrestling and and, and her takedowns. So. I think going into this fight here, you know, against Bruno Brazil, I think her best strength is to try and smother the same way Denise Gomes did. But unlike Denise Gomes, I don't think Shauna Bannon really has that type of striking, you know, to get that respect to really do serious damage to uh, Bruno uh, to Bruno Brazil. But we'll see if she can like offset her, keep her from using her reach. Um, see if she can get in on the inside of the kicks because that's going to be a big part of Shauna Bannon. You know, avoiding the reach, staying on the out, staying on the inside, avoid the outside. Don't give her too much time to think, but make it like a dog fight. And I can see her taking Brazil down. You know, I can see her putting it on her back and you know trying her best to just kind of out grapple and out wrestle because I don't think she's going to outstrike her like that. Uh, Bruno Brazil, she's going to have to go back to you know some of the things that made her you know, look like this threat. I mean, that last fight, first fight in the UFC, she looked like she froze up. You know, she didn't really get a chance to assert herself. So we'll see if she can do what she did in her contender series fight. You know, uh, before that, she had scored that knockout in the contender series, had another first round knockout, had like a submission win and, you know, a couple submission wins, but she's had a few knockouts on her resume. So we'll see if she can use her full her full uh, stand-up game here because that's going to be important. This, this, this fight's basically going to be like striker versus grappler here. Uh, MMA fan for life. I wonder what Bannon was saying to her during the face-off. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Probably trying to get her amped up. Probably trying to say she's going to finish her or whatever. Running Rini in the building. Let's see. MMA fans say, yep, and people forget Denise took that Loma fight on short notice. Yeah. And that's that's another good thing about you know Denise Gomes. She's already coming into the game, taking on the best competition. Yeah, Marcus said not not enough interest to be intrigued about in these fights. No, that's why I said yes. Yeah, probably better. It, it is a daytime card, so I'm not I'm not gonna feel like I'm missing much. Um, I don't know, man. This this fight is basically like I said, striker versus grappler. I don't know, man. I might just have to say if bannon can get it to the ground she wins <clears throat> if bruno brazil can keep it standing she wins uh gabby said both have background in kickboxing right um shauna bannon i believe she does but i know i know bruno brazil for a fact does have a kickboxing background but um from what i've seen from shauna bannon i'm not really that impressed with her stand-up like i am her ground game i, I think she's a she looks a little bit more effective on the ground to me. Like from what I've seen, it, it seems like she's more into, you know, more of like 
a well-rounded kind of base, you know, and not so much kickboxer. But I, I think Bruna Brazil, you know, she has a good chance to win this fight, but Shauna Bannon has a toughness about her. You know, she's she's a pretty tough girl too. So we'll see. Um good, you know, good, good amateur experience too. You know, she has a lot of amateur experience in, in her in her uh fight career. But it's it's on y'all. What do y'all think, man? I, I don't really know what this because some of these unranked fighters, you're just kind of going out on a limb because you don't really know who's going to show up, who's ready for that level, who's going to freeze up. They don't really have a lot of UFC experience to go off of. Uh, Ravioli said he rewatched Sarge and Panny and Ketlin versus Sarge and Panny has a better Panny has a better chance in this fight than I thought at first. Yeah, I, I think yeah, Panny has a pretty good chance to win her fight. But let's see. Uh, what else is Sean Abandon had a back? I don't really see like yeah, she has a extensive amateur career. She's had a lot of amateur fights, but I don't really see any like kickboxing, kickboxing matches. Like I don't know if she's really had any any professional kickboxing matches. Let's see, Ariane Car okay. So Bruna Brazil, she's lost Ariane Carnalosi, Jessica Del Boni before in her career. Those are like way back. Ariane Carnalosi, she lost to like nine years ago. So that's a long time ago. Nine years ago, right when she was like 20. But she's still young too. Bruna Brazil, you know, she's eight and three, but she's still young and I think she can get better. I think she just kind of froze up in that last fight. So we'll see. Um, as long as she doesn't let Shauna bu bully her, she has a good chance to win this fight. Based off what I've seen, how do I how how far do you think Bannon can go in the UFC? Um, I'm kind of seeing some Casey O'Neill. I'm kind of getting a Casey O'Neill vibe from her. Like I think she'll probably lose a fight or two. And it all depends on how she gets better from that. Cause she's only five and no, right? She's only five and no right now. And she hasn't fought like, like the best competition in Invicta yet. Like I wanted to see her fight for Tima Klein or even fight for the belt. Like I wanted to see her fight Danny McCormick or, you know, for Tima Klein. But the last girl she fought was a former Adam weight contender in that Mina Grusander. But, um, off of those five fights, it's still kind of early to say. I think I think she has potential, but she's going to have to be growing in every fight. It's going to be tough, man. Like, it, it really is because if she runs into an Angela Hill, Carolina, Loopy, I think those are the type of girls that are going to expose, like, certain defensive holes in her game. Uh, fighters are going to be able to shut down or take down defense. So how far do I think she could go right now? I think, of course, she has the potential to maybe get 15 by like a default thing, but she's still kind of learning on the job. That's why I kind of see um, I kind of see a um, Casey O'Neill vibe there. You know, Gabby said in her bio it has seven time kickboxing world champion yeah i was looking for some of her kickboxing fights i i, I don't see them though like because you you know they usually post that resume up too they usually post that resume up on the side <clears throat> and i usually see like all of their uh, uh you, you'll see like the majority of their fights whether it's boxing or uh kickboxing and mma and you see some grappling matches Let me see seven time. Yes. Yeah, so, okay. So yeah, she's a Waco kickboxing world champion. Yeah. Now I know she has a uh, black belt. So that's what I mostly seen her utilize, but I still need to see a little bit more. Still need to see a little bit more and how she transitions that. Fifty fifty fight. Yeah. I, I think it's 50-50, though. I, I really do. I, I still think it's 50-50 fight, though. 
because man, like Bruno Brazil's last fight out, even her defense didn't look that good, man. Like Bruno Brazil as a tall, long fighter, does a little bit of karate too. She, you know, her defense and her ability to use her reach didn't really fare well in that one. She was falling into some traps. Um, but let's talk about this band band weight fight. We got Ketlin Berry and Panny Kansan, man. I'm I'm pulling for Panny in this fight, man. I want to see her finally, you know, get to this stage that she's been trying to get to, man. I want to see her go on a streak like Bruna, not Bruna Brazil, but like um Myra Buena Silva. You know, I want to see her go in there and show out and fight with some intensity, man. So let's see. Let's match these two up. Hold on. Let's see. Let's see. Sink said, oh, Sink said uh, he thinks Bruno Brazil has a lot more potential despite the way her last fight turned out. Yeah, I kind of think she froze up in that fight. I kind of think she just, her her demeanor it seemed like she kind of froze up for some reason. And I mean, she was coming in looking strong too, man. I don't know what happened. Just um okay. Let's see here. Let's pull up Panny Kansas' resume here. All right, so Panny 16 and 6. And her last five fights, she's four and one. That's pretty good. If you want to go further back, she is five and one. She has yeah, yeah, she's five and one. Like she she Dropped the decision to Rocky. That was a pretty competitive fight. Some back and forth action in there. But, you know, Rocky kind of schooled her again against the cage and even with her boxing. But, you know, she has wins over Sarge, Alexis Davis, Betch, Jessica Rose Clark, Lena Landsberg. You know, so she beat a, you know, good crop of the unranked bantamweights. She lost to Julia Avila. You know, she she's fought some of the some of those bantamweights at the bottom and by now, I think she should be ready for something. You know, she needs to be ready. You know, she's got to have it tight now because I think this might be, I hate to say it, last chance. Well, she's 31 years old. We'll see. You know, I, I think with fighting those different type of looks now, she should be somewhat ready for a, a threat like Ketlin Varia, you know, somebody who's um just – this big band weight is pretty strong. She's five eight, I believe. I thought she was always like five nine. Yeah, Kelly Mary, I always thought she was like five nine. They're both thirty one. You know, she's a long fighter. She's kind of been working on her hand game. You know, she's fought some experienced fighters. Beat Misha Tate, beat Holly Holm. Um, got a little tighter with her hand game. You know, over the years. But she's definitely a big fighter. She's a, she's a lot to handle on the ground, man. She has a lot to hand handle on the ground. So I, I'm looking at a fighter like Panny, who's got the boxing. You know, she needs to use her IQ, you know, use their speed and lateral movement, keep this fight standing, you know. Um, but Ketlin's not scared to hit back. You know, she's not. You know, I mean, she she's always been kind of um, cautious sometimes. Like, she won't fully go for the kill. Like, even with Holly, and, and like, even that Misha Tate fight, I thought she could have finished Misha Tate, but she held back in that fight. So, you know, Panny can like exploit that. She could take advantage of that. Like she needs to go in there and kind of bully Ketlin Beer, you know, take full advantage and like let her hands go in this fight and use her defense. Sometimes Panny gets pulled into a firefight. You know, she'll go into there and try to make it a war. But to me, I don't, I don't think you want to take that many shots from Ketlin like that, even though she's not going after the KO. Since I'm thinking Ketlin might win. Panny's been gone for a long time. Panny's uh, been gone for – hold on now. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Panny – how long has Panny been gone? About, about a year now? Let me see. Hold on. Let me check your resume. Yeah, Panny's been gone since April of last year. So, yeah, she's been gone about a year and some change. She's been out for about 15 months, which ain't too bad. But, yeah, she's been out for a little while. 
Um, Ketlin's last fight was against Rocky. And that was uh, just this past January, about six months ago. Dang, it's been that long since she fought Holly Holm now, over a year ago? Dang. Yeah, so when you look at it, you can say Kellen Berry has fought more experienced fighters. You know, she's fought as high as, like, Kat, she beat Kaz and Gano, Sarah McMahon, uh, Lost Ivory now, Daniel. She, she's beat Holly Holm and Misha Tate. I think she's faced higher-level fighters, so I think now she has the IQ on how to handle handle certain situations you know she knows how to she knows how to slow the pace down in certain fights you know she'll know how to make the right adjustments and then she'll she kind of will know what to expect from a fighter like panty you know having fought you know at a higher level than her I, I believe but you never know in this type of situation i think panty has that grit and she has that ability to outland she has the work break the volume i'm gonna go with panty just as a pick We'll go, we'll go fan we'll go uh fan pick in this one. I'm gonna go with Panny in this fight. Uh let's see. Let me pull up some comments here. Gabby said winner gets Aldan Aldania. Uh possibly, right? That'd be nice. Like at least if if Ketlin Berry wins, she could get some rematch, uh, you know, some redemption. I wouldn't be bad. Then you have Irene Aldana versus Panty. That's a good fight. Kellen, yeah, Kellen needs to use her size, man. I agree with that because she seems a little, uh, she seems a little like tentative sometimes for a big fighter. She won't go after it sometimes. I don't know if it's because of the knee or something. Maybe she doesn't want to like damage her knee. Oh, Lolita, what's up? Say, glad you're back in action. I needed an enjoyable distraction. <laughs> mm, 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 Pena is embracing the heel role. Yeah, she is. Hold on one second. Okay, so... Lolita said Pena versus Meyer Buena Silva would be a good fight. Hope they meet in the cage. Who is out there you're going to fight? She's ready, she says. Um, maybe the winner of this fight here. Or maybe she needs to fight down. Because she's not in championship level anymore. MMA fans, I don't trust out there either. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like she, I don't, I don't even want to see her fight. She don't need to fight top three or top five right now as punishment as punishment Aldania needs to fight down and it's not even like punishment punishment I'm just saying like Aldania she she disappointed herself man like she came up short she didn't even let go she didn't do enough she didn't do anything against Amanda so it looks like somebody that needs to fight down that's how I see it you know, she, let's see, not Holly Holm, uh, not Byron Buena Silva at this point. Um, already fought Macy Chase on. Shoot, let one of these new girls, you know, beat their next, like, level opponent. And they might, he said, feed her to Jossie and Nunes. That's what I was just about to say. I was about to say, hey, let one of these new girls get in, like, like Myra Buena Silva. You know, Myra Buena Silva has been putting together a nice little win streak. And she got Holly Holm. Yeah, go ahead and let Jossie Ann Nunez. Where is what Jossie Ann Nunez is ranked, right? Ain't she ranked like number 12 or something? That's not a bad idea. I mean, Myra Buena Silva just pulled it off. It's about time to start bringing in some new bodies anyway. Let's see. Hold on. Start bringing in these new heads. Because we got a lot of old heads in here that ain't. They're not showing up and showing out. Let me see. All right, hold on. We're going to pull that up. Pull these uh, doggone rankings up. 
Where is the uh okay? Okay, so Irene is ranked number six right now. Jossie and Nunez is 14, so that's an eight spot jump. But that's not bad. I mean, why not, right? Irene already beat Yana kind of Scott, Yana Santos. Irene beat Yana, Macy Chase on. Um, Carol Rosa is number 10. Maybe we can get Irene out Daniel versus Carol Rosa. Have we ever seen Irene out Daniel versus Misha Tate? That fight hasn't happened, right? Yeah, Jossie is 14 right now. Um, have we ever seen Me Misha Tate and Irene has never fought before, right? James said, I Irene can take a punch. I'll give her that. Yeah, she can take a punch, all right. She can take a whole lot of punches. Too bad she was too bad she ain't giving none back. <laughs> yeah, MMA fans. Yeah. Yeah, she could take a lot of punches, man, but she can't she wasn't giving none back, man. I can't believe she let Amanda Nunes outbox her. That that just showed her the IQ and that just knocked her IQ down for me. Zama said just watched Duda Cobra's old fights and all of her coaches' interviews. Girl might be the real deal. Yeah, I'm gonna go back and watch some of her fights. I had looked at the contender series fight and like two other fights, but I'm gonna go back and study Duda Cobra. I'm gonna see what she looks like. Like what stands out, Zama? Like what stands out about her? Is it is it like her stand up game? Is it her strength, ath athleticism? What is it? Uh, Gabby said, "When is Av Avila coming back?" I don't even know if she is. You know, she's so she's had a baby. Uh, I believe then she owned like a gym for a while, and I think that kind of went down or something. So, no, no, no. She had an injury. She, she, you know, she had a baby. Then she also had an injury. Had an injury. So she was out, you know, that just kind of added up for, her. you know, it's just been kind of piling up, you know, now she's, she was out for like a longer period of time than she had planned. You know, that, he said it was garbage performance in terms of, yeah, it was like, I was giving her a chance too, you know, that's what I'm saying, making me look bad, thinking Irene got a chance, which, if she would have came to fight, she might have had a chance, right? Yeah, she wasn't giving nothing back. I mean, I'm just saying, man, she she wasn't giving nothing back. I was I was really disappointed in her, you know, as a fighter because you go through all of this training, all of this work, just to do that. Okay, so Julia Abiel, her last fight was about two years ago. She choked out Julia Story Ranko. Yeah, then she had her baby, then she had an injury as well. So I don't know when she's coming back right now. Jamie Lynn Horth, yeah, I think Jamie Lynn Horth, um, I think she'll be ranked. I think Jamie Lynn Horth might be ranked by the beginning of next year. Not a bad fighter. Due to Kobe used to fight at 125, and I think her friend could be a problem for other girls. Yeah, I think like her for early fights were 125. Some early fights, yeah. But I hope Pandy can do something now, man. I, you know, I just think Kellen Berry is kind of short changing herself sometimes when she's not fighting at her full potential and she's not like using her size enough. So I want to see if Pandy can rise to the occasion, man. I want to see if she can do this. All right, so let's let's look at this main event uh, uh, real quick. Okay, so uh, Molly McCann and Julia Story Ranko. Um, my thoughts on this fight, first off, I think that the UFC is um, this is another this is another I'm gonna say this first. Um, this is another um, how do I put it? Let me think. Okay, this is this is proof. This is real, real proof on how how competitive and how dangerous the flyweight division is right now. Okay, this fight with Molly McCann is proof on how dangerous and how talent drenched this division is right now. And why do I say that? Because 
they didn't even want to give Molly a fight with one of these other girls at Flyway. They had to dig out somebody they were going to cut and Stoya Ranko, who's only scored one win in the UFC, in a higher weight, okay? They had to drain somebody down for her. Again, I like Molly, but I'm just saying, like, did they not feel confident that she could fight one of these other flyweights? That's the question. Like, you know, Molly's an entertaining fighter. You know, she can get some wins even against some of the other flyweights. But, like, did they not feel like she could get a win? You know, they did they say this division is that dangerous that hey, we we can't risk it? Like Molly is a champion in her own right because she brings in a big fan base. You know, she can fight a co-main event in Ireland or wherever, you know, near to her home country. But um we can't risk putting her in there against one of these bad girls at flyweight right we can't risk putting her in there with an italia silver we can't risk putting her in there with kareem silver we got to make her look good because she's still an entertainer like she's that type of fighter she's a showman right that's why when it comes down to it they said you know what let's get a fighter drain them down find somebody that can do it because we can't risk putting her in there with one of these dangerous flyways and that's why i say that this is proof why the flyweight division is that division right now because Molly McCann, who's in that division, she's a money maker. She's a money maker. She got a big fan base, but they can't risk putting her in there with somebody even like, um, <clears throat> like uh, who? Well, she already knocked Luana Carolina out. No. Um, they don't even want to, they can't risk putting her in there with like a Jasmine Vish, Jazzy Vicious or uh, they can't put her in there with Miranda. They don't even want to risk that. Uh, she already beat Arian Lipsky before, but uh, they can't risk somebody like Tracy Cortez or um, what is her name? Melissa Gatto, you know, so it's, it's coming down to just being a show. You know, she might score a highlight real knockout here. You know, they got her in there with a girl that's that drain herself down the weight i mean what do y'all think is julia julia story ranko going to be fighting at her full potential i mean she made the weight she made 125 supposedly you know she's been feeling good you know she made it the, she she drained it she got she got the weight off in the right way you know she didn't pass out on the scales thank god right you know she looks okay what do y'all think i mean does she have that big of a chance or is this going to be just a highlight real knockout for Molly McCann in her homecoming? Cause you know, they can't risk putting her in there with anybody else, man. Let's see. McCann will never crack top seven. No, she won't. I mean, and that's the thing. Like, I think, you know, for the hardcore fans, we know she won't, she, she probably won't, but, you know, she, she, she's got a fan base. People like Kareem Silver versus Tracy Cortez. That'd be a good fight. That would be a good fight. I think that would be the first time Kareem might win a decision, though. I don't know if she would finish Tracy Cortez, though. So. Tracy Cortez is pretty tough. Yeah, this is a co-main event, Marcus. I can't even believe it, man. Teron, what's going on? Uh, Miranda, Miranda, oh boy, he said Miranda's gonna get knocked out. Oh man, she better get that fight to the ground, man. She better get it to the ground. That's all I can say. FC said, What are your three most interesting, intriguing matchups coming up in the future? Um, FC, I'm looking forward to Whaley versus Lamos. I'm looking forward to uh, Manone and Rose. And I'm looking forward to Tyler Santos and Aaron Blanchfield. Um, if I had to throw a fourth, I, I'm looking forward to Grasso Shevchenko, the rematch. I just don't put that as top three because we've already seen it once. But um, that's going to be a good fight. But I want to see what how well Aaron can do against Santos. 
And I want to see if Rose is going to be as dangerous as people think she is against Manon now. Because there was a time when people were saying, oh, that's an easy fight for Manon. But now it seems like a lot of people are starting to really believe in Rose in this fight. You know, they believe in her technical skills. So I got to see it. Uh, Way Lee Lamos, I mean, yeah, that just explains it. I mean, I've been I've been calling as I've been calling Lamos as a future contender. You know, and um, even though she had some rough fights, you know, I knew Lamos would get matched up. But I think Wei Li uh, might have, she might have a tough, tough fight in Lamos, man. If this fight gets extended out and she gets on the outside, put on the outside, you know, Lamos has that power to end the fight. Oh, yeah, hold on. Zama had said something about, uh, yeah, here it is. Okay, Zama said, due to COVID, she's pretty relentless and her stand-up is actually better than I thought. She manages range pretty good, bounces on her toes, got some footwork. Her coach is uh, Dagestani, and he says that she's pretty much the hardest worker at his gym. Wow. Dang, you know, and, and you know, that's that's pretty hardcore coming from one of them. I mean, I'm just saying it like that because, you know, I would – always think they would put a man first and say that to men, but you know, he's actually saying the woman's the hardest. He's actually saying that the woman's the hardest worker in that gym. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go back and watch some of her fights. I am. All right. Let's see. Lolita said Aaron and Santos. Lolita says she believes in Rose. Okay. Arabioli said Megan didn't even get into the fight. Hold on, I gotta keep refreshing this thing. It keeps moving weird. James said Aldania is even worse in term of effort. Megan was taken out quick. Aldania took it all and didn't even try. Nunez landed strikes. Most strikes her entire career on Aldania. And that says a lot too, man, because here we're thinking Irene Aldania is like this solid boxer, right? But Nunez lands her career high strikes on a boxer what does that say okay so zama said my ranking of upcoming fights is Whaley lamo santos aaron and shevchenko and grasso okay yeah Whaley lamos is my number one my number two is probably going to be manon rose and then santos and blanchfield is probably my three Honorable mention is Grasso Shevchenko, too. Yeah, Whaley Way Lamos is going to be something, man. That That's, uh, I don't see it going the distance. It's not going the distance, y'all. Do I think Whaley will use wrestling? I think she will. But I also think um, Lamos is game to submit Whaley if she gets a little too reckless. So we, we got to look out for that. Like, Wei Li is going to wrestle. I think whenever Wei Li finds that opening, she's going to take the fight down. She's, she's either going to take it down by choice because she's going to avoid the power. But if she gets clipped and she feels that power, then she's going to go into a wrestle mode. And if she wrestles, puts Lamos on her back, she's got to be careful because, again, Lamos has got that degree, man. You know, she's dangerous with her jujitsu. Could wind up being like Holly versus Myra Buena Silva, you know. I keep seeing that kind of play out. Like if Whaley gets reckless, she's not, re you know, she's not going to be grappling and rolling with Carla now. You know. Lolita said, "Who are you referring to? Who is the hardest worker?" Oh, um, I was reading Zaman. Zaman was saying that Duda Kova is the hardest worker in her uh, gym. Yeah, Ravioli, that's what I'm saying. Her her sneaky, her jujitsu sneaky good. So don't be surprised if you see Whaley get caught up in some type of choke now and she get laid out now. I'm just saying, like, when you see that when you see that happen, <laughs> that, I'm just saying that's a big possibility. Lamos might put her to sleep too now. It's possible. It's a high possibility. And I think Lamos, go look at Lamos's training. Like, I know they're not giving everything away. 
but Lamos is working, man. Like Lamos is rolling. You know, Lamos is in there rolling. So Lamos has got, you know, she's she's got it in her head that Whaley's probably gonna try to take her down and they're gonna look, they're gonna look to submit. Like it's wise for I'm gonna go ahead and give you a key to victory for Lamos. Like Lamos needs to look for submission over position, in my opinion. Because Whaley, when she gets position, she's stronger, I think. You know, she's stronger, she's got ground and pound, she's got hard elbows, good hip control. So you need to kind of counter that. I think when Wei Lee is looking for position, she's more so open for submission. So hence, Lamos needs to look for submission to me. Uh, who do you think is physically stronger? I think Wei Lee might be physically stronger. I think she might be physically stronger, yeah. But, but... Lamos ain't too far behind. You know, she carries a lot of strength in them legs. Like, that's how she generates her power. Like, I think natural power punching is uh, Lamos, but when you call in, like, physical strength, I'd say Wei Li. Uh, James said, of course, Lamos can take her out or easily hurt her. Yeah, she, she's got she's got the, the ground game that people aren't, you know, looking at enough. So she don't like Yan Zhana said she was prettier than Whaley. Oh, she just trying to stir stuff up. <laughs> you know, Yan Zhana just messing around. James said, I will give Rose a lot of credit if she beats with known. That's a bad weight against a straw weight. Yeah. I yeah, I give her credit if she does it. Yeah. She'll be in that, she'll be in that bracket, man. I don't think she does it though. I don't think she does it. Sink said, I think people are blowing that Rose Renami Yunus physique out of proportion. She looks like a sub average flyweight in terms of physique. I mean, you know, she's got the height. Like, she definitely got the height to be one. But, like, I think her, like, overall frame doesn't really fit the division. You know, she doesn't really have, like, a lot of, like, she can, she can get jacked now. Like, Rose can put on a little bit of muscle, but it does, she doesn't just look that type of lean, like, Joanna does or somebody like th that belongs in that division. Did I see that pick of Rose? She put on a lot of masks. Did you see that pick of Rose? Uh, which one? Is it on her page? I know when she's out there gardening, like you can really see her muscles out there when she be she's out there gardening most of the time. Like when she's working in that garden, you can like see the muscles on Rose. But we'll see. We shall see. Um Lolita said Rose did that woman. She's got more of a woman body now. Um, let me see. Is that a recent picture? Like the one where she's wearing like red or something? Um, the one she was standing in the garage. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me see. Cause I mean, in the grappling, the grappling tournament she did was at bantamweight against Jillian Robertson. So that can kind of give you an idea how how she would look with a little bit more muscle mass on her, right? Or a little bit of mass on her. Um, hopefully she'll shape out a little bit more. Um, there's a picture from May eighth on her Instagram where you know arms are looking pretty big. I wonder what she walks around at, though.
Yeah, if you go to her Instagram, there's a picture from May 8th where she's standing outside in the garden. You can really see like her arms there. Oh, you said, did you mean garage or garden? Because you might be talking about the garden. You might be talking about the same one I'm talking about, MMA fan. So we'll see how it plays out, though. I, I think it's going to be an interesting matchup, man. Um, Y'all, Zama said, yeah, Rose got a slim frame, and we know how much muscle mass on gentle frame affects cardio. I'm looking at Maverick. Yeah, um, you got to have that rough, that, you know, you got to have that, that frame. Like, Yoana got cardio for days, man, because, like, she's got that rough frame about her. Like, you can see, like, the muscles coming through her skin, you know, this, she's more lean like lean that muay thai frame you know where it's really like wiry and lean and you can see the muscles coming through but rose she's long but she's built more like a woman you know i'm not saying joanna's not built like a woman but in this case you know rose seems a little bit softer and that's not a bad thing i'm just saying like it works it's straw weight but i think the more she gets the type of weight that she's going to put on for 125 comes out a little bit softer for her. You know? Yeah, Yoana has a super low body fat. Like, you know, she's got real low body fat. That's why it was hard for her to cut weight at 115 a few times, you know, towards the later part of her career. But I think, you know, when she was at 125 against Valentina, she looked, she looked good. You know, she looked good. She, cardio was there. She was durable punch resistance the striking resistance was high j ball said rose wanted to become a bigger straw weight she wasn't as small as people made her out to be no she's not like um she's like you could see a good size difference when she was fighting Whaley, but i still don't think she's just like this this full-fledged or even like uh a flyweight altogether you know what i mean like she's a big straw weight but she's still not a flyweight if that makes sense to me I mean, if that makes sense, you know, for y'all. I mean, to me, she just doesn't. <laughs> Zombie sick. Yo, I ought to build like SpongeBob. No, I like Yoana's frame, though, man. Like, for a fighter, I think Yoana has a good frame, man. Like, I, I like her build, too. I'm, I mean, when she was fighting, you know, she was long, wiry, and she used, the, all, she used every bit of it to her, the best of her ability, man. Like, as far as her, you know, her kicks her speed i just wish we could have seen her at 125 a few times man i wish you would have stayed at 125 man <laughs> yeah i agree with that i agree with that ravioli i think Joanna gave valentina the best fight for a while up until tyler to me she did i you know she went the full five and actually had some good moments in that fight. But, um, yeah, it was a good fight. That was probably one of my favorite fights of hers, really, because it was most competitive. Uh, what else? What else? What? Oh, yeah, yeah. So back to Molly and your, uh, Julia Stoyranko. Really, um, like I said, they're giving – they're trying to give Molly McCann uh, – a fight they're kind of feeding to her here you know Ju i believe that in julia story ranko but don't count story ranko out though man story ranko got a submission game and if story ranko if if her cardio is good and if she can take a punch at this weight and if she's feeling good and she lost the weight in the right way story ranko could be stronger than molly in this fight and she could go in there and submit molly you know it might be a cherry pick gone wrong who thinks who thinks it's gonna be a cherry pick going wrong? Molly McCann versus Joya Story Ranko. Making this girl move all the way down to 125 like that. Who thinks Story Ranko was gonna go in there and pull off the upset? They should have just made Molly and Miranda fight. Ravioli said they keep giving her these grapplers though. Yeah, and they get yeah, on top of that, they're giving her one that moves around. No, excuse me. They're giving her one that they know that she can move around a lot against. And on top of that, again, you know, she's dropping a lot of weight. We're talking about a girl that was fighting at featherweight and bantamweight. 
hasn't really won, but hasn't. I mean, won but one fight, right? She's only won one fight. So really, it is a fight that is kind of a pick, cherry pick for, you know, somebody that can make Molly look good in this moment. James said, actually, Molly, Barbara would be a good one on the feet before Barbara takes her out. Mm. I don't even know if it lasts that long, man. Like, I don't even know if Molly could make that one competitive at this point, man, because I think Macy would probably hurt her, though. It could be interesting. I don't know, though, man. It could be. because Yeah, because Molly does get down when it comes to throwing her hands. She get, she get down with some boxing, but when it gets in the clinch, Macy Barbara going to make it ugly, man. But yeah, everybody, this fight is going to be the main co-main event. So around five o'clock, I'll probably see it. But you know, and maybe if it turns out to be interesting, I might do a post-fight reaction. But not going to be on for a fight companion for this card because it's early and I'm I'm gonna be busy. Macy's becoming pretty well-rounded. Yeah, Macy's becoming well-rounded. Lolita said, will she make weight? Will who make weight? Uh, you talking about who's going to make weight, Lolita? Uh, Soy Ranko, if you're talking about her, she's already made weight. <clears throat> Molly was there to capitalize on the UK wave. No one would even be talking about her if it wasn't for Patty. Right. That's all I'm saying, Easy. e It's all about marketing, man. Like, she capitalizing right now, you know. She she's unranked. She's probably one of the most popular unranked fighters in WMMA right now. So you know, why not capitalize on it, right? Might never not ne might never see a belt, but you can still see them checks, right? Lolita said, "Who did they match Miranda up against?" Yeah, catch aware. She's taking that late notice fight, man. She better be ready, July twenty ninth. I'm hoping Miranda can pull it off because got to be careful. Got to get to the ground. He said Molly gave Tyler a good fight. She did, right? She did. It went the distance. She stayed in there with three rounds, right? Tyler Santos, you know, Molly, you know, that was, that was a different Molly. Day. I don't know, man. Like Molly was in it that time. Molly got destroyed by Aaron Blanchfield, but she went three with T Tyler Santos, you know, styles make fights. Okay. The pick is on MMA mania. I got you. I got you. All right. MMA mania. MMA mania. Oh, the Instagram? Hold on. <clears throat> Wait a minute. All right, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Where is that picture? Yeah, she got that Conor McGregor attitude, James, until you knock her, until you, you know, knock some sense into her. On um, Twitter? Just a second. I'm I'm over here looking for something. All right, all right, y'all. It's been a good one though. I'm about I'm about to get up off of here in a minute, but um, yeah, not really really no picks here, man. Uh, I just wanted to kind of talk about the fights and the significance of the fights. I mean, Panny and Ketlin. It's a significant fight because they're both trying to get into that mix. You know, for both of them, it's like. 
kind of in that make or break type of situation. You know, they're both 31. They both fought a lot of different fighters and they've both been at their level for a while. So it's time to raise up. All right, Teron, I'll catch you next week, though, man. 291, 291, right? And, you know, definitely Shauna Bannon got to, Bruno Brazil, they got to show up and show out because these unranked girls, they got to start doing something big, man. Um, but, yeah, Molly, Julia, it's not going to say who's the next best thing for Valentina and nothing like that, man. You know what I mean? Like, it's not going to make us say, oh, this girl's ready to whoop Manon or Aaron or somebody like that. Um, and that just shows you levels is levels is levels, man. Cause Rose never been a flyweight. She coming right in to fight Manon, right? She's coming, she coming right in to fight Manon, you know, see Molly McCann fighting unranked fighter. That's from another division, you know? Yeah, for sure. Tyrone. And you know, it, it just don't work like that, you know? Oh, won't let me type the word, but yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. For, on Twitter. Hold on. Let me see. Let me pull this Twitter up real quick. But yeah, those are three fights I am looking forward to. I was looking forward to Tatiana versus Vernon Jenderoba this year too, man. But sucks that fight ain't going to happen. Macy Barber. Talking about making Juliana Pena three and one, three and forty in the last six fights. I was like, dang. Yeah, Molly McCann all up in her face. I see her here again, man. Look at her all up in her face. Story rank, oh boy. She might you might get that submission now. All right, I'm I'm on this Twitter. I'm just trying to look for that picture with Rose. I want to see how big she looks now. Boxing does too, though, easy, don't they? Like they'll push UK fighters harder than other countries sometimes. And then when their fighter comes up short, it's like, oh man, you know. You know they push Anthony Joshua hard. You know, Kell Brook got pushed hard. Oh, yeah, dang. Yeah, Rose is kind of jacked in that picture. It, it's off of uh, Pat Berry's Instagram. Oh, dang. Core's looking a little bit tighter, too, man. Yeah, thanks, uh, MMA fan. I, I just found it. Core looks a little bit tight, too, man. Like, okay. course the comments are just people talking trash you know so dang man sometimes people don't take fighters seriously they just be talking trash like anybody said nothing yeah one person acknowledges that she, she got she got jacked somebody says she's on secret juice <laughs> Yeah, so she's big for a flyweight. Like, that's definitely saying, no, like, she's big as a flyweight. Uh, you know, where she's packing on that muscle mass. But um, when you compare, when you look at Manone, though, I mean, when you look at the size there, it's like, whoa, you know. Yeah, yeah, easy. She coming. I, I believe she's coming. I hope she is, man. I hope she is. I hope she's ready to put on a fight, you know. I mean, people are saying she doesn't look good. They're saying, oh, man, no, she looks good there, man. Like, you know, as far as what we can see. She's got uh, another month, you know, another month to really, like, get familiar with the frame and, you know, just see how she can move around, make sure cardio is on point. So we'll see how she handles that uh, physical strength, too, like, of uh, Manon Perot. 
the thing is, we've seen how Manon can handle Myra Buena Silva, how she could handle Jennifer Maya. And we can say those naturally bigger flyweights are really strong. And I believe if she would have wrestled Chikagin, she probably would have had success there. James said nervous. No, not at all, man. I'm, I'm just talking about physique, man. I got to give I got to give credit where credit is due. We talking about physique. She looks good, man. Lolita said, who's a blonde Irish girl? Oh, that's Shauna Bannon. She just got signed. Yeah, but yeah, if y'all want to see which picture I'm talking about, for y'all that don't know, if you go to Pat Berry's Instagram, um, or you can go to Twitter. For some of y'all that don't have Twitter, you go you can go to Pat Berry's Instagram because that's where he uh that's where MMA Mania they clipped it from. They screenshot it from um Pat Berry's Instagram. And I'll probably post it up on my page too. I'll I'll post the picture up, Lolita. You said put the link to the photo. I'll put it up on my community page when I get off of here. How's that sound? Because we'll talk about it. We're gonna talk about how she can handle the frame, how she can handle the strength. Is she gonna be durable? Is she gonna be faster, slower? Is she gonna wrestle? James said Manon's a weight bully. Come on, man. That's your weight bully. So is Tyler Santos a weight bully, too, because they're that big? If you can make the weight, if you make the weight, man, not a weight bully. If you make the weight in the fights to still um, competitive, I mean, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Easy e because I'm just thinking about her physique when she fought, when well, grappled Jillian Robertson, right? Robert Henry, what's going on? Yeah, Manone and Tyler, that would be a good fight. That, that, that'd be a really good fight. I would have liked to see Manone and Tyler and Aaron and Rose fight. Aaron Blanchfield versus Rose would have been a good fight. You know, that would have gave Aaron a chance to fight another former champion and see how good Rose's grappling is and even see Aaron's striking defense against Rose. I would have loved that fight. Aaron versus Rose would have been a good fight, man. And yeah, Tyler and Manone, that would have been good, man. Tyler Manone, Aaron and Rose, that would have been good fights. Shoot, Manone, <laughs> if Manone and Santos fought, you might as well go ahead and call that a Bantamweight fight. You know, people are going to be thinking that's a damn Bantamweight matchup right there. Um, James said, are all of Manon's fights outside of you at the UFC at 135? No, they're all 125. One of them was like 140. Like her very first fight was at 140, though. Her, ver her very first fight was at like 140. It was like at a catch weight. But then she started fighting at flyweight. <clears throat> yeah, Manon won that fight against Leah McCourt. I think so. Leah McCourt lost that fight. Rose is going to be the most hated in the division if she wins. She taking away people's title hopes just like that. <laughs> no, if she wins, that's props, man. Like, she could be a three-time champion, two-time strawweight, one-time flyweight. You got to give her credit. But I don't think if she wins, she ain't going to end like me. She, she going to dominate and she going to defend the belt. I think she'll probably lose it or then after that or, or she'll retire. Tyler Mano, Aaron Rose. Yeah, that would have made more sense, man. To me, now I think about it, it would have made more sense. <clears throat> yeah, it really would have. It really would have made more sense, though. But I'm out of here, y'all. It's about one, 
and I just had some my downtime here while I was eating something. And um, I'll catch y'all tomorrow. If anything, at if anything interesting happens tomorrow, like I don't know, somebody's head gets knocked off, then I'll jump on and do a post fight. But if nothing crazy is gonna happen, like you know, somebody's head gets spent around or something, I'll, you know, we'll see. Ravioli said, uh, no, James said, wait, Manon fought Ricci. Yeah, she was going to fight Marina Moreau, but Marina Moreau pulled out of the fight, so Tabitha Ricci stepped in as a short notice. Why they didn't give her anybody else at the time, like Montana or somebody, I don't know, but, hey, you know, it was a short notice fight. Because it was supposed to be Marina Moreau that night, but don't blame Manon. You got to blame Marina Moreau because she pulled out of the fight. <laughs> I was ready for that fight too. Moreau versus Marie Manon would have been a really good fight. But she pulled out of the Tyler Santos fight too. Moreau was supposed to fight Tyler Santos and she pulled out of that fight. Yeah, I believe that too easy. They probably wanted to give her a style matchup. You know, they wanted to give her a striker versus striker because they was like, oh, we don't want to repeat. Yeah, Marcus said just because a fighter fought one fighter who was small doesn't make them a weight bully, right? And you just can't help it. There's different sizes, you know what I mean? Like some people are tall, some people are shorter. But if they're all like the same weight, it doesn't really make you a weight bully. I mean, if y'all meet up in the same division, that's that's fine. Yeah, that was uh, Richie's first fight. <clears throat> yeah, she took the fight, though. I give Richie some credit. She just wanted to get into the UFC. I mean, James, you said she's more of a bantamweight. I mean just based off of size or how she fights though like some fighters that are bigger just doesn't necessarily mean okay that that means that she should be there how does she actually fight though you know because i see known as a flyweight you know she fights like a flyweight you know it's a different type of style like when you look at straw weights straw weights approach fights different than flyweights you know that's how i see it like for me she could be a bantamweight one day but i mean she's making the weight so as long as she can make the fighting weight that's fine ravioli said a man that was bigger than size bigger than cyborg yeah mma fan said where is chin been at i don't know gabby said whaley still has desires to move up how does she fare Ooh, how does she fare? Um, how does she fare? I think, dang, man. Whaley doesn't really have like a lot of height either, you know? Um, I think Whaley's, I think Whaley does better at straw weight. Let me just put it that way. I think Whaley might get a win or two, but I don't think Whaley will be like dominant at flyweight like she could she could be at straw weight. I mean, I know she still hasn't dominated at straw weight, but I believe like when Whaley gets more and more well rounded and better, I think that her style style skills and size are for for uh, straw weight. <laughs> 
said, imagine Mark Winter Silver wins the belt, then Mano moves up. Oh, boy. I will say and new, right? <laughs> I'm just playing. <laughs> Easy says she too small. Yeah. I mean, she could probably get like a one, one or two wins. But I don't see her dominating like the division like she could possibly do a straw weight. But, yeah, let me get up off of here, y'all. It's been fun. You know, it's almost one. And I'll try to catch y'all on the next one, maybe tomorrow or Sunday. Hit that subscribe and that like, y'all. Thanks for the time, you know, to come and chill. And good conversation as always. I'm out, y'all. Peace.